Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to a sunny Wednesday afternoon of Chem 170 Organic Chemistry with your host, me, Dr. White. All right, just to remind you, when we're through today, which is going to be early, I will be sending out an email with the password for the password protected PDF file for test four. I can get that fixed one day. And you'll have until I think one or two tomorrow. If you're a couple minutes late, don't worry. Oops, I didn't say that. Yeah, don't worry. Uh, but you'll have until then to upload your answers for test number four. By Sunday, I will post your scores for test number four in D2L. I will also send out an individual email for um, all your points you got for each of your answers. And next Monday, I will go through test number four answers. I'll cut it out of the video, but I'll post this private video for you to look if you're not here, if you want to go back and watch it again. All right. Another thing. Uh, I guess a week from this Monday will be the final exam. By this Sunday or Monday, I will post a breakdown for the final exam and the description about it. It'll be online just like we've done here, and you'll have until next day later to finish it. Uh, and I'll talk more about it next Monday. And that will be the final exam. You don't know, it's almost this, next week is our last lecture week. Why did the semester go quick? I guess time flies when you're having fun with organic chemistry and Dr. White. I hope it did for you, it did for me. Uh, so what I'd like to ask you is, you should have all gotten by now the online, um, what do they call it? Um, got a mental boy. Uh, evaluation for me and Chem 170. Please fill it out. Also, I do always ask every semester about this time. If you like what I did this semester, please go to ratemyprofessor.com and tell people about it. If you didn't like what I did this semester, please go to ratemyprofessor.com and tell people about it. All right. Now, we're going to do something different today. I think it'll work out better. I'm going to do the lab first, then I want to cover some stuff, and then I'll let you go. Don't forget, if you have any questions during the test or just want to stop by and say hello or any other questions, please stop by my office hour tonight from 6 to 7.15 on Zoom. Oh, I forgot one more important thing. Guess what? After the lab, before I do some other stuff, which on amino acids, I've got a big, I mean, a big surprise for you, but I will be cutting that out of the video. All right. The final lab and the final lab, let me make sure you can see it. And you can, deals with carbohydrates. And I really should change the name. Well, it does deal with carbohydrates, but mainly starches. Now, starches, as you've learned, are long chains of glucose bonds together. Now, what you don't know is, oops, I've got to take the cover off my pen here for stylus, put it in a safe place. Starch. Oh, hold on, I got to turn on my pad. It's on. Starch is a polymer of glucose. Now, what it really looks like is the helix. And this line are the different glucose molecules bond together. And all along here, as you know in glucose, they're hydroxyl groups. 
that were on the original glucose molecule. And they're all around here. Now, it turns out back in the late 1800s when they didn't have early 1900s, the type of sophisticated electronic identification equipment we have in organic chemistry, unfortunately, I don't have the time in one semester to teach about infrared spectroscopy, hydrogen nuclear magnetic resonance spectroscopy, or carbon uh, nuclear magnetic spectroscopy. But before they had all that, how could we tell does something have starch in it? Well, the chemists found that iodine, which is a purple color, when you react it with starch, I think it's a purple, or no, it's a dark brown. I'll have to look it up. But anyways, let's call it purple for now. No, dark brown. And when the iodine gets inside here and it interacts with the hydroxyl groups, in this helix, it now looks dark blue. So dark blue, you might even think it looks, if you don't look at it closely, black. And these chemists who found this out, found they can look at different food groups and say, oh, there's starch in there or not. Well, there's a problem, iodine, is a solid and it's also nonpolar. And it's a solid at room temperature. And it'd be nice if I could just put a few drops of a liquid solution on a food. And if it turns dark blue, almost black, I know there's starch in there. Someone found out that if you take potassium iodide or sodium iodide reacted with iodine, you form this new salt, the I3 minus, this plus, this minus. And this is I polar, ionic, which is polar. Guess what? It's now water soluble, which is important. And now if you take a starch molecule, plus this in a water solution or water ethanol, let's just call it water solution. I think there's some ethanol in there too. Water ethanol solution, the similar thing happens. You have the hydroxyl groups all around here. They now interact with I3, the ion, the iodide I3 ion. And this also is a, <clears throat> excuse me, dark blue. And if you were in a lab and you weren't familiar with it, you might even think it looks black. And if you put this, and this has a name, it's called tincture of iodine. The solution. And you can go to a pharmacy and buy that. Let's try something out. And if you notice, you can go anywhere to buy it. Walmart has it, Target has it. I'm surprised I don't see Walgreens up here. But if you see this bottle here, 
it's a brown color. That the solution I know is a dark brown. So what you would be doing in our lab today is working with some very dangerous chemicals, foods that have carbohydrates. And some of those foods will be potato, bread, white, yellow cheese, white cheese, flour, cereal, sugar, honey, and cornstarch. And what you'll do is put a couple of drops of the tincture iodine, which we provide, let it wait for about 30 seconds or even less, a minute, and observe what you have. By the way, if we were face-to-face, -face, you'd be in and out of this lab in under 45 minutes or even a half hour. But let me show you what it actually looks like. All right, let's try this again. There we go. Let me make sure you can see it. You can. Let's go full screen. An, imp an important constituent of our daily food are carbohydrates, which we consume in the form of starch. Starch is a high calorie food that converts to sugar during digestion. Starch is also produced by all green plants as an energy store. Today, we will conduct an experiment to test the presence of starch in potato, rice, sugar, and salt. For this, we will need iodine solution, which is yellow-brown in color. Note the change in the color of iodine as it is put on the rice and potato. If you look real close, Don't it's turn the iodine to black. Put some iodine on the sugar cubes. The color does not change. Salt too does not change its color. This proves that sugar and salt do not contain starch, while the starch in rice and potato reacts with iodine to form a blue-black compound. Now, the reaction is because the blue-black color is basically the formation of polyiodide chains from the reaction of stuff. Didn't want to do that. But an iodine. Let me move us over here. All right, so what you're gonna be doing is, if you were face to face, you would take potato, bread, yellow cheese, white cheese, flour, cereal, sugar, honey, and cornstarch. And if you notice, I have the data there for you. Now, a couple of interesting stories. Uh, because of things I still don't understand, the uh, laboratory manager, Jack cannot go out to the store for this lab and bring and buy uh, bread and cheese. So I would bring it in. Same thing with a potato. Uh, either I would or he would bring in a potato. Well, funny story. It was around. I brought in some, and I'm Jewish. And I have bots in the house. I brought it in because bots will last forever, unlike bread will eventually go moldy. And Dr. Daly, 
try to be cute and a bottle with the broken up matzah for them to test, take pieces, he put matzah. And the first time he did that, students came up to me because most of like all the class wasn't Jewish. Where's the bread? We couldn't find it. And I said, no, it's the matzah, that's your bread. Afterward, Dr. Daly changed the label for the matzah, says bread underneath in brackets, matzah. All right, now, interesting story behind the yellow white cheese. Well, I had to bring in some cheese and my local food store, I go to Valley Foods, they had a sale on the inexpensive sheets of American yellow cheese. So I brought some in and students said, Dr. White, this is cheese. How come it's turning blue? Is there shouldn't have any starch in it? Or, and I said, well, let me look at the label. And if you look at the label for that yellow cheese I bought, it had a filler, starch. So I also, next lab, I bought some white cheese and I read the label, made sure there was no starch in there. And that's what you would do. And then for this lab, you answer the questions. And that's today's lab, the last day lab. Now, make sure you get the labs in by next Wednesday. Those of you who haven't turned all in, remember my lab amnesty program. All right, any questions about the lab? And if you want to try it at home, you can go to any place like Target, Walmart, Walgreens, CVS, and get tincture iodide and put a few drops in everything. I should tell you, Tincture of iodide before the things we have now, like the antimicrobial compounds, was how if you got a scrape or a cut, you'd put some on there and that would keep it from getting infected. That has antimicrobial properties. Well, when you were a little kid and you got a cut and your mother said, well, I got to put on tincture of iodide. No, I don't want to. Because of the ethanol in there, it burns like heck. I mean, I remember when I was looking, no, I don't want to. And then a company found the first antimicrobial called Bactine. And they could make a solution that was antimicrobial without ethanol in it. I wonder if Bactine is even still on the market. I don't know, but let's look. And it's still there. And they say now, uh, relieves pain and everything and wound care. And that was, they made a lot of money when they came out because all the parents bought this because you wouldn't have to have your kid. Oh no, it hurts. All right, now I have a very special surprise for you. which is not a good thing. All right, let's take a five minute break. We'll come back in about five minutes, 152. There are a few things I wanna cover and then I'll let you out early. And after that, I'll send out the password. Five minute break time.
I'm back. Wait for everybody to get back. All right, couple things. As soon as I'm done right now, in about 20 minutes or so, uh, maybe a little after I'm done, I will send out an email with the password for test number four. Don't forget, you have until tomorrow to do it. Be sure to read questions carefully. Unlike past tests, I have one question, which will be give the starting material products, I forgot which they are, and you can either draw the structure or write down the name of the chemical. That would be the starting material or product. So you can do either way. That's unusual, but we did that for the carbohydrate problem set. On Monday, I'll go through it. By Sunday, I'll get you your scores before that in uh, D2L. Also email out individual points for each question. Now, next week, I will be doing a review for the whole semester, the whole week. It helps students. Not only do I do the review from the you see online or on D2L, go through that like I did, I'll also go through some key problems to let you work on that, and that will help you. I'll talk more about it on Monday uh, about the final exam. By Monday, I'll have posted uh, the uh, information about the final exam too that I'll go over on Monday. Now, what I'd like to do now, let me just close a few things up. Hope you enjoyed the tour of the chemical plant. Most people never see the inside of a chemical plant. Let me close one more thing. All right. I don't have a problem set for this because there's not much I can ask about it, but let's go through again a couple of key things for amino acids, peptides, and proteins. Remember, what is an amino acid? It's a carboxylic acid, and a better way of drawing it, carboxylic acid, which you know, on the alpha carbon, the carbon attached to the carbonyl carbon, there's an amino group. And when R is not hydrogen, the alpha carbon is chiral. When R is not because that's a chiral carbon now. Remember, chiral carbon has four different groups, four different atoms, or a combination of four different groups or atoms. You should know that the reaction, and this again won't be on test four, but I'll talk more about it. I think I have about eight or 10 points on this. I'll talk more about total points too. But if you have, you learn for test number three, carboxylic acid. Oh, that's a awful looking E, sorry. <laughs> You form an amide. Let's try this again. And here is that amide. Now here, this would be what we call our prime, and one of these hydrogens, our double prime. This would be your amine part. 
And obviously, this is your carboxylic acid. And you form the key linkage to form amino acids together is an amide bond. which other people, and I won't have on the test, which was off for the slide, peptide bond. And I won't ask you, but a protein, protein is 50 or more amino acids bond together by amide bonds. Therefore, you should know when you digest or consume, eat a protein in your stomach, and I think as your smaller or larger, test and it happens, you have this amide reacting with hydrochloric acid that's in your stomach and water to form a carboxylic acid plus the amine salt of the amine you would have used to make that amide. Now, it turns out these are connected together in the amino acid, which looks like this. Here, I just have two amino acids together, and you form the carboxylic acid plus the amine salt you would have used to make that And this general reaction you learned for test number three. Now, this amine right here is not involved in the reaction. It is because amines are still base. And when it comes along with this part of the carboxylic acid, it reacts to form also an amine salt because you learn amines plus HCl form an amine salt. Now, leaving my class, there are a couple of things you should know. Obviously, I burned into your brain now. By now, how many bonds to carbon? Yep, four. You break carbon carbon single bonds most of the time, like almost always. No, you don't. And the fourth, the other four things you should know. One, you should know how to describe with words and a general reaction what happens in your stomach when you eat a fat or oil. What's the key group in a fat or oil? An ester actually three of them. And therefore, in your stomach, there's acid. And because it's water there, hydrolysis of an ester. And the general reaction is, you learn for test three, ester plus acid, the HCl, but we'll right at H plus, because that's how I taught it to you, and water, you get back the carboxylic acid plus the alcohol you would have used to make that. And your stomach with a fat or oil, you get fatty acids plus glycerin. You learned that. You should know that, leaving my class. The next thing you should know, when you eat a carbohydrate, How to describe with words and a general reaction what happens in your stomach when you eat a carbohydrate? What's the key functional group that holds glucose together? Glucose molecules in a carbohydrate? The acetal. And I showed you that. And therefore, in your stomach, there's acid. And because there's water, that's acid hydrolysis.
of an acetal. And here, you learn for test two, You take an acetal or ketal. If R prime is hydrogen, say acetal, it's carbon, it's a ketal. Keep your eye on the carbon with the two oxygens bonded to it. That becomes the carbonyl carbon of a ketone or aldehyde. And this part becomes an alcohol. And you don't have the balance, but for those who want to do there, and in real life, you know, these are connected together. The alcohol is part of the glucose. Now you also learn what happens when you eat a protein. How to describe with words and a general reaction, what happens when you eat a protein? What's the key functional group holding amino acids together in a protein. It's an amide functional group. And therefore, it's acid in your stomach, water, we call that hydrolysis. acid hydrolysis of an amide. That's how you describe it words. And for test three, you learn and now we will use hydrochloric acid because you need to know what anion you're forming. You don't have to write it down, but I will. Don't want to cheat you out of your money and not do it. Be lazy. No, I don't. R prime and R double prime can be hydrogen. And what you get back is the carboxylic acid you would have used to make that amide, plus amine is basic. In the presence of amine, uh, hydrochloric acid, you get the amine salt of the amine you would have used to make that amide. And those are the three main food groups. In college, they were beer, alcohol, and pizza. But now, let's if you eat fat or oil, key functional group is an ester, acid hydrolysis is an ester, and this is the general reaction. You should know also when you eat a carbohydrate, how to describe with words of general reaction what happens, what's the key functional group in a carbohydrate. An acetal, as acid hydrolysis, an acetal. And here's the general reaction you learn for test two. And finally, you learn for a protein what's the functional group that holds amino acids together? An amide. And how do you describe what happens when you eat a protein in your stomach? Acid hydrolysis of an amide. And here's the general reaction amide, HCl. You get back the carboxylic acid and the amine salt of the amine you would have made used to make that. And the final thing I want to make sure you know how to or know, leaving my class, how soap works. You should know the structure of soap. Is a nonpolar tail and a polar head. And detergents are the same way you saw that in the bubble lamp. Next, you should know water, which you use to clean like your hands, is polar. And remember, we had a lab about polar, nonpolar, and dirt. and grease 
are nonpolar. And if we're in a classroom at ECC, I'd be writing the next thing as large as I could on the whiteboard, which can get pretty large. The key to puzzle how soap works is And notice I've gone to a much larger font. That's a key to how soap works like dissolves like. And you know, things that are polar are po soluble in polar things. Things that are nonpolar are soluble in nonpolar things. You mix the two together, it doesn't, they're not soluble. And you should know how to describe a micelle. Take dirt particle. It's nonpolar. Water wants nothing to do with it because polar and like dissolves like. That's why I have it in big because it's the key to the puzzle. And but the tails of the soap say, oh dirt, you're nonpolar. I'm nonpolar, like dissolves like. I want to be near you. And a lot of those do. And when this happens, it forms the soap molecules arranged that way around the dirt is called the micelle. And you should know now the outside of my cell looks polar to water. And the micelle looks polar to water, and water says to the micelle, I'm polar, you're polar. I know like dissolves like. Let's go down the drain together. And they do. And when I was washing my hands earlier today and also doing my dishes from lunch, I was probably the only one in the area around here who thought, oh, look, I'm making micelles with the soap and the food particles and other dirt or the dirt that was could have been on my hands when I wash it with soap and water. And you should know this. And with that, I'm done for today. If you have any questions, come to my office hour tonight. In a couple of minutes, I'll be sending out an email with a password for test number four. Be sure to submit it on time tomorrow. And with that, next week is oh, our final week together. I'm sad. But anyways, hope you enjoyed the semester. Uh, well, one last thing. I think I mentioned earlier, but I'll do it again. If you like what I did this semester, go to ratemyprofessor.com. If you didn't like what I did, go to ratemyprofessor.com. And don't forget to fill out your student evaluations. And with that, I'll say, gang gesund, goodbye. I'll see you either tonight or next Monday. Bye now.